We truly do become a result of the people that we spend the most time with. And this is why I'm so focused on the value of masterminds in our businesses. What I wanted to do with this is to give you an opportunity really to be a fly on the wall and a very, very high productive mastermind that I get to be a part of. The National Rethink Council with Berkshire Hathaway Home Services is actually a collection of nine agents that are up and coming or that are doing a tremendous amount of business and they gather together three times a year. We gather together and we discuss best practices about the business. We talk about specific things. Like in this episode, we're going to talk about how to generate more listings, how to be more effective in the listing presentation, and how you can move your business from being buyer focused to the thing that really moves your business the most, which is listings. This is something that I know you're going to get some value out of. You may even want to watch this one a few times and take a ton of notes. Let's get to it. All right, so foundationally speaking, listings is the best thing we can do. That's why I love that we're going to kind of wrap up with this because um, if we get this right, everything else takes care of itself, right? Um, so what I want to do is, is I want to open this up and talk about some of the things that you're doing, maybe that you're just doing that you've always done that work well, and maybe some of the things that maybe you've made some adjustments with the current status of the market with low inventory. Um, who wants to get us started? How do you want to get us started? Sure. So for our listings, we have, when I'm on my listing appointment, I always kind of make fun of myself and say that I'm a true nerd because everything that I do is like hyper-focused and research, um, which I hope helps bring them trust to me. So um, we always do our listing pictures on a Wednesday. My photographer is also my videographer. So he does the high-res pictures on a Wednesday. Um, we do the teaser videos. If you've ever seen those, they're always 35 seconds or less because right. it's longer. Men minutes. will watch it. We're trying to just get them a taste of the house and want them to want to see more. And that's when it hits coming soon status. So the pictures come in that night. We always get them right away. Um, we do coming soon status on Thursday. Now, in North Carolina, when you do coming soon status, days on market don't add up. Right. That changed on May 17th. So now it's going to start oh, counting days. Oh, nice. So the market is currently, it's going to be very interesting to see what's about to happen. Um, because you could have it on the market, you'd have it coming soon for 30 days. Uh -huh. And then showings are on day 31 and it's like, well, what's wrong with the house? Right. Right. Um, so I think that that's going to keep coming soon status by going away. Anyway, um, so that's on a Thursday. And then before we had coming soon status and then we would go active on a Tuesday. We always go active Tuesday morning at or 5 o'clock. I do that for a lot of reasons. Um, one, I think that most Americans, when they wake up, the first thing that they do is go to their phone. And I want, before the boss is angry or the kids are sick, I want them to start thinking about this house. And if I want this house, I also want other realtors to start thinking, what buyers do I have for this house? Um, and our email, our, I'm sure every MLS does this where they email out right. saying, hey, this is what's going on. So not only are we doing the social media blast that's hitting over 10,000 people that are probably not buying this house, but maybe they've got a friend who is, right? And while their head is clear, they can go ahead and send that to their friend on social media. Anyway, so that all hits that day. Um, and I like Tuesdays because in my area, a lot of listings are on Thursdays. And Thursdays are a very competitive day. So if you got one buyer and you're showing them two houses, are they writing offers on both houses? I hope not, because in North Carolina, we have a due diligence fee. And that's a deposit that you do not get back. So if your offer gets accepted, so, I mean, and our due diligence is, the, la the lowest one I've seen all year is $50,000. Oh so gosh. you're writing this, your offer gets accepted, say you don't want the house, you're out $50,000. I always tell my sellers, throw a heck of a party, invite me, and we'll go find you another buyer. That's just cash in your pocket. It's great. Mm -hmm. So um, anyway, by listing on Tuesday, we've got a couple of days for showings and then to get the offer wrapped up. So Friday, I'm not all stressed out about negotiation, negotiations, showings, whatever. I can actually enjoy my weekend with my family. And by doing Tuesday, we've gotten in front of the Thursday losers. I changed my stuff because of this whole talk, and it's radically changed. It's, it's given me my life bananas. Back. It's given me my life back, and my clients are making more money because on Thursday everything's chaotic, chaotic. Everything's scary. Oh my gosh, you know, am I gonna get this house? I'm gonna get the house, whatever. And Tuesday, I'm isolating myself away from the chaos, and people are like, "Oh, this is nice." Okay, and it's it's awesome. So if a seller says, "No, I want the weekend crowd," let's yeah. go on Thursday or Friday. What do you do? I'm thrilled to do Thursday mm -hmm. if that's what works best for your schedule. I will tell you, I am a drug-sniffing dog when it comes to your net proceeds. <laughs> so this is a true conversation. Ask any of my clients. I say the same thing in every appointment. 
Um, if that's if that is not your motivation, totally fine. We can do it on the weekends. I will tell you as an experienced realtor, when I see people that do weekend showings, that's time away from my family. So I'm automatically going in with a little bit of a negative headspace. And if I'm a seller, I don't want a realtor going in there with a negative headspace. I want the realtor going in being like, they're honoring me, they're respecting my time. This isn't going to suck up my entire Saturday. So if, if your time is better spent that way, that's cool. If you want to talk about net dollars, we list on Tuesdays. And I have never had somebody say, let's list on a Saturday or Friday. Not yet. All right, so this is, let's, let's, let's kind of go down that vein um, where we're talking about actually, and then we're going to come back to generating listings. Let's talk about that listing process, how you launch the listing, because this is something that people that have been in the business for three years, they don't even know what that means. They've never had to launch a listing. They just literally put it up on the MLS and they have multiple officers. It's going to be more and more important as we go forward, as well as during the listing presentation to be able to present a very strategic plan of action of what we're doing. You want to speak to that, Andrew, and then I'm going to come around. The listing launch. Let's talk about the listing launch. When you're sitting with a seller and you're like, here's the process from the time we sign the listing agreement till we go to actually getting it closed. Including, is it a coming okay. soon? Is it a broker exclusive? That's, that's exactly right. right. Here's what I do, and it's in that handout. And Jimmy wanted me to go over this last night, but I didn't want to bore you with it, but I think this is probably an appropriate time. When I, After you do the bond and report with the seller, show me the house, hey, this is beautiful, and you sit back down at the kitchen table to have the conversation, which hopefully you've already set the expectation that... Hey, sellers typically want to know three things. What's my home worth? What do you charge? And how do you get it sold? So if it's okay with you, I want to touch based on a couple of that. And it goes back to just telling people what's going to happen before it happens. Do the same thing every time. The first critical point, guys, the only thing you can control is what day is this house going to be ready for photo and video? And you always compliment me. Hey, you're pretty close already. You did a beautiful job taking care of this place. If a photographer came here right now and take all this stuff, move it over there, snap, snap, snap. So you're not... And then sometimes they do, like, hey, we need to get a painter in here, whatever the case may be. But this timeline is key, and I'll break it down for you real quick. This is how you get high fee. Pictures, video. Then, within three days of that, we're going to go coming soon. Because once I have this picture and video collateral, what I'm going to immediately do is start doing buyer profile demographic targeting, where we're going to create compelling content and distribute this with intention on Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn and YouTube, and we're going to target the buyers most likely to be interested in this house, and at the same time, we're going to target the agents. What we're trying to do here is stack the deck in your favor. This is called marketing like the year we live in. Most agents don't know how to do it, and the ones who say they do it, they actually don't know what they're doing. I have two people on staff. This is all we do. Now, guys, we're not racking up days on market here, and our MLS is different. Coming soon doesn't count, Just but if it changes, it so coming soon is optional. You can do that from 0 to 21 days, and it's important to put key dates here. So pictures, three days later, we're coming soon. 0 to 21 days. Then we're going to go active. Signs on the... You know, do you not have the coming soon already signed by when you do the pictures? Because you want to be protected, right? Oh, yeah, we'll get the, we'll get the listing agreement. Signed in advance, though. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get the listing agreement. We just do all that in dot loop. I just fill out one form, and then the team kind of runs with it. Then we're going to go active. Then within, and you just say, hey, probably take 14 days and we're going to go under contract. Now you got to be careful there, right? Because the market's changing and stuff. But hey, if I had to guess, I'd say this is going to be 14 and 21 days. Then we just have to get through a home inspection if, we, if that's in the deal, and an appraisal, and then settlement. Now here's the key thing. Right here before we're active, that's marketing. <coughs> and one of our unique value propositions is we know how to market these properties. We're going to get you tens of thousands of eyeballs before you're racking up days on market. Other agents you're talking to are probably coming in here saying they just want to put the house on the market because that's what works. And that's the only tool they have is the MLS. Well, I don't gamble with my client's equity, Mark Stark went. <laughs> this is how you stack the deck in your favor. Now, you don't have to do any of this. I'm just saying this is how we do it. So, <coughs> then from active under contract, this is where you need someone who knows how to negotiate. And it's not just about the price, guys. It's about the terms. Purchase price, closing costs, what type of loan are they getting? Have you talked to the letter? What about the title? Is the inspection? Is the appraisal? So the whole nine. This is deal making. Different skill set. Totally different than over here. Both are equally as important. And then finally, from contract to settlement means you need a pro with key relationships who knows how to solve problems. Because the last thing I'm going to let you guys do is put this house on the market, lock down a good deal, and go back on the market. Like I said, we're here to maximize your equity. And I know my business depends on you saying nice things about me on the internet. A little plug for the review later. So this is the key. Most agents don't haven't mastered these skill sets. They haven't mastered all three. And if I'm you, I wouldn't even touch anyone who doesn't know how to do all three at a high level. So then I go right to the commission. 
So that's value, 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 value. At this point, if you deliver that with confidence, they're gonna be like, holy, did you really do that? And you're showing them 33,000 YouTube. This is the abbreviated version, but you really show them. But before you go to the commission, so say hypothetically, and at this point you kind of know their time frame. What's today, 19th? Let's say this house is ready June 1. We could probably go coming soon. And guys, these are just made updates, yeah. but just, just so you can understand it. By 6, 5, we're coming soon. Say we do that for 10 days. By 6, 16, you're active. <coughs> we'll probably be under contract by the end, by the end of June, 6, 30. And this takes another 30 to 45 days, depending. We're gonna be out of here by the end of July. Everything's gotta be out. Does that work for you? And people wanna know what happens before it happens. They're like, oh God, we'd love to be out of here by the end of July. Oh, we should probably get going soon. This is totally up to you. You don't have to make a decision right now. Now we charge 6%, half of which goes to the buyer's can agent. Can we talk about commissions? Yep. In this way you can. Yeah. And okay, then, thank you. Bang. And then, but here's, this is the key when you do it. <laughs> the key is that this is what we charge. And then there's no negotiation. I'm like, are you okay with that? No. We charge 6%. And here in Baltimore City, you're also going to have to pay another 1.5% transfer and recordation fee. Or whatever is your local thing, I want them to be able to calculate their net. Because all state they're thinking is... or whatever that is. Every, yeah. every state will be local. Because what I promise up front is, hey, what do you do to get it sold? Kind of just talked about that. What do you charge? And then finally, what's my home worth? So, and yeah, I just go through that just to give them their net. So if you're at 6% plus 1.5% fee, because in Maryland, they just rob you blind. <laughs> And I always say, the joke is, hey, that's just the city and the state robbing you for no reason, right? Schools suck, taxes are high, crime's out of control. We're getting out of here, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so then I said, whatever you net, just multiply it by 0.925, and that's the net. Now they're not even, they're not challenging me. They're thinking, what do I get if I get X? And then finally, now pricing, we, pricing your property is a strategic exercise. People probably came in here, showed you comps, went over a CMA. I don't pretend to know what your house is worth before I walked in here. I could have walked into a bomb going off. I didn't know how nice it was going to be. Or you stroke them. Say, so what I'm going to do tonight or by tomorrow, I'm going to send you a detailed statistical analysis of the actives, the pendings, and solds, and really give you what I would consider a strategic launching price. Because unfortunately, we don't get to pick the sales price. And I don't know what the price is for this house. I don't know how high I can get it yet. Yeah. But I will get it high. Because I don't pick the price, but I understand the freaking process. Mark Stark. Explosion 2021. I've heard that before. That's he, but this is so powerful to say, hey, I want to get you as much as you can. And I would say, if you took a room for all the top agents, were you surprised how high a home is sold this year? Everyone's, oh my God, I couldn't believe how high it was. Exactly. I'm not going to gamble with that, but what I will do is I'll push it up as high as we can get it, as high as we possibly can, because you get to sell this one time. And then, do you guys have any questions? And they're kind of, their head's spinning there, and then I just get up. Like, all right, well, you guys let me know. They will not let you leave if you do that right. They're saying, no, 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 um, sit down. So, okay. Do we need to sign anything with you? I said, I didn't bring anything for you to sign. You sure? You guys, you guys ready to go? Because I'll just, I mean, if you give me all your information, we'll get over to you in a couple of days. You want to make them beg to work with you. That's right. So you guys don't have to do this. This is just, I know this works because we're selling, you know, three homes a day, every single day. And again, you know. So Andrew, when you talk about you're going to get the top price, do you talk about your negotiating skills at that point in time? Yeah, it's all that's all on the timeline. All the magic's in the timeline. If you review how Sharon presents it, that's luxury. And I'm eager to work with Taylor on this because I don't really do luxury. Is different. If this was a five million dollar thing, I wouldn't be so cavalier about it. No, I'd really hammer home some of this more exclusive stuff right. and how we're targeting people from all over the country, like I saw in your book. And we have a brand that's super cachet in the high end. Mm -hmm. I'm not super. I'm not. Our average price is like three eighty or something. Yeah. So let me circle back on this. Under mouth. So, Andrew, um, you mentioned about that the process is not giving the price there. Let's talk about how you follow up with the process with the yeah. price and what that then leads to as far as the signing of the list agreement. Yeah. Super key. Now, this is where I fail sometimes because I'm just moving a mile a minute. I'll forget to follow up after this. And that's why I have, right, what I've done now is I have a, my sales partner come with me on all these listing appointments. She, she brings the folder, prepares, he puts the piece of paper in front of me. I made this so easy for myself, and then she makes sure I follow up on this. It's as simple as you pull up the comps. We all know how to do that. Active, pending, and sold. And I do it on BombBomb. Bomb, and I send them a BombBomb bomb video, just like Jimmy's unsolicited CMA. But this, and, I, and they always watch it like 10 times. Right. It's crazy. They say, hey guys, this was so nice meeting you, as promised. Here's my, my pricing analysis here. And then I'm looking at, and I have like three screens over my office. I say, hey, in the link below is a link with all the comps and the maps that are gonna have an impact on the pricing of your property. Here's all the houses active, pending, and sold. And I'm looking at the data. 
hey, there's seven active right now. The reason these are important is because if we went on the market today, these are the other seven people might consider. So we need to take that into consideration. Here's what's currently pending, which is good to see happen. The market velocity, and you want to use these good terms to make yourself sound smart. We, I'm, we're really big into absorption rates and market velocity, so pending is important because we want to see how long did it take them to go on the market, compare us to them. And then finally, here's what's sold. Here's every unit that's sold in the last six months, which is important. So that's what an appraiser is going to use. Now, this link has all that data, and there's an attached statistical analysis. Every MLS has like a stat analysis thing. It just shows it beautifully. Days on market, list of sales price ratio, blah, 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 blah. So you hit the... But this is more just, you already know the price at this point. Like you're doing a little studying, so you want to make sure you're not wildly off. You say, we like the strategic launching price of X, and you put it right in here. And then I always say, look, I'm the vice president, you're the president, you're going to make your own decisions, you want to go a little higher, a little lower. This is where I think we're going to have the best chance to maximize your equity. So if you have any questions about it, let me know. We're sending you, the, I just said, that now we're sending you the list of It'll be in your inbox shortly. I've copied my assistant on it. So Done. what do you do for the price in a listing agreement? You just say TBD? The one he does. TBD, yeah, whatever I say. They don't really fight you on it. Sometimes they want a little bit more and say, hey, we're going to get more at this price. Yeah. But I always thought, I'm, I'm like, I don't like die on that hill. I say, look, you can list it for what you want to, mm -hmm. but the process is is the value. We're going to bid, we're, this thing's going to get max value. The only thing you're doing by pushing higher is maybe losing a little bit of the exclusivity we're going to control before we go on the market. I'm not saying you can't do it. A little aspirational. It's like rolling the dice. I like put something in your listing agreement that says after so many days we're going to decrease this if it's not successful, if they push you like that? I do. It's, it's, in a normal market, you would, but today's market is pretty no matter what, isn't yeah. it? Well, yeah, you always say that verbally, but that's a different market. Like, when that's, that's a different when market. That, yeah, this is like, I just want to, God, give me this listing and let me just start making content. I'll set, I'll set that expectation. If they, if they do push me high, I'll set that expectation. Like, all right, I can, I can see an argument for that, but, right. you know, I, I think we need to have a plan in place to visit, you know, a reduction. Yeah. I apologize because I do so many DM mastermind groups and then I did the Berkshire Hathaway one on Tuesday. Did, have I had this conversation this, in this group that I used to always tell people up to two months ago, I was highly confident when I'm talking about price strategies. You can overprice a house, but you can't underprice a house. Did we talk about that at all? No, we have not, but it's really good. So, so I was, this last spring, two months ago, I said, listen, uh, and I was at an event the other day, and I had a guy worth millions of dollars. He's like, how can that be? And when I was done, there's like six people around. They said, we agree with that. I said, if you overprice a house, you may get no offers or one offer, and you don't have anybody competing against each other. I said, if you understand human behavior, if you price the house down here, what we're seeing is two hundred ten thousand our houses sell for two sixty. Right. We're seeing five hundred thousand our houses sell for six eighty five, because what's happening is we're pricing the house down here where we're getting lots of showings, and then we're getting fifteen twenty offers, and the, it's the emotion of three or four. That's all we need is three or four. We don't need fifteen. Three or four, giving us escalation clauses, removing their appraisal gaps, and that they have become so emotionally involved in that process that we'll get one or two of those to pay a, a premium price for that. So in my mind, if you're saying in the old traditional way, if I want to price it here because I want to get the highest dollar and gives me some room to negotiate, that is actually going to hurt you today because you're not going to get the emotional frenzy of people competing against each other, which runs it up and makes them do irrational things that you would never recommend they do. Now my point is, over the last couple months, the market has changed. As interest rates went up and buying powers went down, as the stock markets went down, as gases went up, as you know, there's a lot of things in the economy taking people to the sidelines. So buyers, sellers have been here, buyers have come here. So houses we're getting 15 to 25 offers on, we're getting three to five offers on. Right. So my, my, my master, in masterminds I've been saying, you can overprice the house, you probably can't underprice the house, but that says you have to be much more strategic about that, that there's gonna be some caveats, that you probably need to be here at a certain level to make sure you don't go too low and only get two offers on the thing, and now you've screwed your seller because now you got a pissed off seller. So we've got to be way more strategic today right. than we did two months ago. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. I think it's very important during that listing presentation that you tell them that pr pricing a property is a very strategic exercise. We do not take it lightly. I like to study this sig for a significant amount of time because I'm not going to put my name on something that I feel like that I'm not leaving you and your family in the best possible condition. So I'm not just going to rush into that. I can give you my gut. I might change my mind. Because I'm like, well, what do you think? Well, I'll tell you what I think, but this is going to change. And as long as they know you're going to study it and they right. trust you and you say yeah. deliver that with confidence. And I always say even things like this. Like I, I say, look, I'm really good at this. And I pause and I smile and nod. And they nod too. You look at their forehead. Well, that's no. 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 Only if they start fighting me on the field. I'm like, you fight me on the field. That's about 1%. <laughs> My favorite he just said something that's really important. Though. We all know this, right? Deb Sizek, who was a uh, master of this for years, it was like, 
when you're saying something that, like they're trying to like your actions and body language matters as much and many times more than words right. and he said right he you saw what he did yeah and you know what I do I used to do that in recruiting all the time and I would tell you every single time they're all not I would shake my head too. they would shake but their head what do you say I would before say, that I'm like, matters too say I'm really good at this and they're going yeah this guy is good <laughs> but but Andrew do you agree with this theory is because the problem is so many sellers have unrealistic expectations their neighbor had 73 offers and it sold for 50,000 over list price or 100,000 over list price and they so you've got to sh explain to them the market shifted and so that's the reason I was making that statement I was, yeah. saying, I was oh, yeah. with that statement but you're walking through it in a process that you maybe you're getting them there where you don't even have to have that conversation with them but if you've had a pre-listing call that we talked about last night you know they think the house is worth 800,000 you think the house is worth 700,000 so you you got to have a little before, different strategy going this, in there, right? You only present on things you know they want to hear. Exactly. But they do always want to hear, unless they, they, hey, this is just what do you do to get it sold? What's my house worth? And what do you charge? But I always find out what they think the house is worth. And always. you just do that. Yes. And yeah. I'm just doing that. You got to do normal conversation. Call, guys. I yeah. bet if you're not doing it, I beg you to do it. You're yeah. better prepared. Even when you're in the house, yeah, I see a ball. I bought it for three sixty eight. You know the market's up eighteen percent. Before I came here, what are you guys thinking? Yeah. I'll tell you what I think. Yeah. yeah. Guys, it's, they right. it's, it's the system, it's the marketing, it's the negotiation, but it's also making people, I believe today, because we got to understand, mental wellness is at all-time negative high, right? Stress, anxiety, depression are all-time highs, and now we're doing the largest emotional transaction that most people do in their life, a real estate transaction. The last part of value that I think cannot be underestimated is you have to emphasize to them, and I've heard you say this, how to make it a simple, easy, stress-free, fun, enjoyable transaction. There's going to be stress in here, but we're going to, we're going to reduce that as much. Right? People will pay a premium. Yep. And if you can make it an enjoyable transaction, oh my God, you have raving fans. Yes. I always tell them, like, real estate falls on the same emotional plane. It's death and, di and divorce. It's death, divorce, into real estate. Right. I'm here to make that not so difficult. Like, use the alliteration. It's really fun. People laugh about it and rolls through. Now, am I missing something in those... That, that I'm, I'm thinking off the top of my head and popping things off. They so. have to believe they're better off going with you. Right. I'm very honest, yeah. right? They're, are they better why off Why would they do business with you and why would they pay you more? Well, if you're not including why. those bullet points, you're No screwed. one knows how to market this. This is this costs a lot of money. I'm in my own professional drones, videographers. We're going to make compelling content. We're going to distribute it intelligently across every single platform. We're going to pour our own money in here. And look, selfishly, I'm doing this not only to get you the highest dollar. I want, I want all the neighbors to say, oh, my God, my agent didn't do that. And they have. So can you help me with that? We're partners here. we got to work together on this. Right. I'm a, I want to bring them in like, dude, this is my guy. That's huge. And then you have to, the negotiation thing, you can use all these different examples, case studies, whatever you want to do. But if you do it, the volume that you're doing, it's like, dude, it's irrefutable. Right. And then finally, all the key relationships. Like, hey, anything that comes up on inspection, I know every single appraiser here that works in Baltimore. We settle on these things two a day, every single day. These, half these agents owe me favors. We're going to make any problem disappear. Easy, easy, easy. Yeah. And then I always like to get a couple laughs going, some kind of a comedian. Right. And I always just say, look, I'm going to crack someone's skull wide open on this house. <laughs> <laughs> I want brain damage on this house for you guys. Okay. We're going to we're going to we're going to crush somebody. But Cal, you, you want to add something? Else yeah. I, I think I have just like two two things to add, and and I, I like where he's kind of talking about the devils in the details. That's one thing that I personally really lean into in my market because, um, you know, you want people to have the confidence that it's going to go smoothly. You know, I tell people all the time, like most agents can get you a pretty good price for a house in this current market you know that's that's irrefutable but very few agents are going to be able to insulate this deal on the front end to where it's actually closing for the same price at the end of this transaction you know if you don't you want to eliminate these roadblocks as much as you can early on by putting in pro seller language into the contract and baking that into the deal to then when you get to the finish line you're you know what the product is because you you accepted that product up front and you know we worked out all that stuff and that's one thing that I can do that a lot of agents don't do. Um, deal insulation. Yeah, that's really down. good. Yeah, so I use insulation. I insulate the deal. Say that. That's really good. And this, then, uh, and then this the second is R30 thing. This R30 here, baby. Mm -hmm. this is, you don't get higher insulation than this. No. This is blown in. R45. R46. <laughs> you won't have a heating bill. And then uh, I, it's I, use done. A, I use a very similar marketing kind of like you know, like language from what Andrew said. Um, the only thing I think I do a little differently is I just name it, and you might too. I just I actually learned that from Alan Dalton a couple of years ago, where um, you know, it, in order to market something, it has to have a name, and so that I kind of took that to heart when uh, when we did this, and uh, um, I just you know kind of I, I just call mine this a new age marketing plan. I didn't want to make it too new fancy age. and dress it up. Yeah, new age, and and so then really what I do is in that the at the listing appointment I kind of tie 
t keep tying back to that. You know, this is what I do differently than most agents because I'm in a market where we do have some old people. You know, and that's mm -hmm. the bottom line. Like, you're not going to find this house in a plain dealer. I'll tell you that right now. You're like, like, these people are everywhere, man. Yeah, and so I, I'm really differentiating myself from a, a new age marketing approach, which is like yeah. everything you talk about, right. versus you know what what some of these other agents in, that are top producers and you know they might have been around 30 years, but to me that's a negative. You know, I I think the longer you've been in this industry, the more set in your ways of the old school mentality you are, and that's how I kind of overcome the fact that I am a younger, newer agent, yeah. for, you know, to, compared to the rest of my market. Yeah, it's really good. Um, same same thing. We call it our listing launch formula. This is the way we did it. And like it was that. just, it talks about, hey, we're gonna launch this thing onto the market in a way that anyone that is a, is a part of this market, they, they will see it multiple places. There's no doubt they're gonna see it. We, our job is to get as many people in here as quick as possible. That's really good. Listen, um, Vince kicked our meeting off even before we got here talking about it's better to have, um, what was it, Vince? It's better to have, um, to be prepared and have- and Less Brown, Less Brown, yeah, 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 I love Less Brown. It's better to be prepared and not have an opportunity than to have an opportunity and not be prepared. So this so is, that's a mindset that I try to keep my agents on is always be prepared. And so one of us had this conversation, we had this conversation this morning about when we were doing this thing yesterday, you know, is did I prepare for Jimmy saying, I really didn't. I couldn't even remember what the questions were gonna be. But I'm like, if you guys do not know this off the top of your head, you're not prepared. You're dead. And so an opportunity arises and you're not prepared, you're not like, oh shit, I need three days, no. You need to know. You need to know what you're saying to buyers. You need to know what you're saying to sellers. You need to know what is the value you bring and why people should be doing business with you. If you don't know that, you're not prepared. The confidence that an agent should have when they walk into that, I mean, there's no doubt, uh, there's no doubt in most of y'all's mind when you walk in there, I'm getting this listed. Mm -hmm. Because you know you're better prepared than every other agent out there. So now we've got the preparation portion. We're ready for this. We're prepared for that opportunity. Now let's talk about generating those opportunities. And I think what we want to do is I just want to go rapid fire around and then we'll we'll come back and visit on some of those as we do that. Um, so just one thing that you're doing, the most important thing you're doing right now to generate listings. Duncan, I'm going to start with you and then we're going to come around, Curtis. Come oh, around. man. Uh, I guess two for me because I usually kind of coincide and meet with each other. Go after FISBOs, hound them as hard as I can, and then also reach out directly to custom builders and see how it is that I can serve them better. I can talk about that more, like yeah. more in depth all day long. Yeah, we'll come back to that because I want to yeah, talk about like vacant that. land and the builder relationships when we come back around. But Curtis, come to you. Uh, I try to pound like just sold and just hit the neighborhoods that we sold in. Um, door, I, I actually do <coughs> knock still quite a bit. Great. Which, <laughs> wow. Now He's it's like getting hot. Open the door for Curtis. Now, come on. now that it's getting really? Well, yeah. you know what? Honestly, it, People do open the door for me, which they is do. crazy. And I yeah. usually wear something nice. Now, summertime is, is getting close, so it less and less. I'm telling you, when I, I write, write, Vegas, when I write my book, Dress for Success, yeah. I'm going to give a huge yeah. talk to each one. Yeah. 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 Uh, but that's work. And so you're taking the something neighbors, where you've yeah. had some success in compounding that. You try to, yeah. yeah. Does, sure. Is it just the door knock, or is there a is there a just sold campaign? Is there anything else that you're doing? I need way? to get better at that. Um, I don't do a ton of flyer or like mailers. I'd rather you know hang something on the door, give them something while I'm there. Um, what is, what is that? Part of that is like open house stuff too. So yeah. it's it's not just one door knock. It's we pre list door knock the neighborhood, invite them to the open house, and then it's kind of try to follow up. And I just keep track of everybody's notes and. We've had people years later say, "Hey, you door knocked my house." Yeah. How, so before. after you after you've had the sale, you kn you knock on the door. What yeah. do you say when they open the door? The, hey, we just basically it's good news. Hey, we just sold your neighbor's house for this. It was this, this, this. If you ever think about selling, you think just you sold door knocking. Yeah, that's exactly. Right. So just basically. so you guys know, this is Omaha science. Uh, I have no proof outside of uh, my agents doing this over time. Uh, we found if you knock on seventy to eighty doors, you're going to get a deal. Love it. Well, it's called circle prospecting. I'm not trying to jump my turn, but yeah, that is fine. how I get my new listings. That's the only way I've gotten them recently Let's outside of my it. sphere. Go ahead. So, like, I don't remember the stats, and I'll, I promise I'll send them to the group when I get back and I can look at my notes, but um, there's literally a number about it. So a home goes up for sale, right? There is a statistic that says it's like it's like an 80-something, 80 85% chance that within a half-mile radius of that one house, three homes will come for sale. That's right. So, I don't care that I didn't get that one listing, I mean, I care, but I my goal then, as soon as that one comes up, is to make sure that my name is in the hat for those other three that are coming up. So I do a mailer directly to those houses that are around. I do Popeyes, like I'll drop like um, a CMA with koozies or whatever. And again, I don't care if the numbers are off. I hope they're kind of off, because I hope they call me. And then another thing that I've done that I've got a lot of success with is just a, uh, and this is a Tom Ferry thing, but it's, um, 
a brightly colored post-it note with my business card. Would love to chat about the value of your home. Put your, your business card and then your post-it note so it holds the business card on the front door mm -hmm. and, and leave it and walk away. And, but it, it's the um, consistency. You have to go at least once a week for four weeks once that house comes on the market. And it has to be at a, a steady clip because that's what will get them to call you. Yeah. You know, there's a NAR statistics, and this is not going to be exact, so don't hold me to it. But roughly, if I remember, the circle prospecting uh, model is that when a house sells, at least of the 20, clo 20 closest neighbors, three of the 20 will consider selling. Mm -hmm. And so it's a, it's a not a, so this is something where you're calling people where yeah. literally we're talking about 15% of the people you call if you talk to those 20 people are in their mind considering that. So I completely agree with that. I'll tell you just anecdotally as I've been watching the foothills and what's going on in our neighborhood. Uh, um, it, and I thought about, I haven't figured out a way to do this, but there's gotta be. Watching price jumps. In our markets, we've had major price jumps, right, between sales. And every six months, we've had at least two, it's a relatively small development, but two houses go on the market. Nobody's owned them. They've all been fragmented, totally different agents. But we had, the average has been around 800, and we had one sell for a million, recently jumped up 200,000 big time. When that happened, three homes went on the market, right. like within a two month period. And all three of those homes were individual different agents. And I just keep going back to this idea that most markets are totally fragmented. I get they may have read relationships, but if the realtors have been doing the work that you guys are talking about, somebody would own that neighborhood. Exactly. I guarantee it. My newest farm that I have, I, I got two listings on the same street across from the street from each other. Yeah. And literally people just assumed right away that I was the lead agent of that neighborhood. And it's only because yeah. I, saw, I circle prospected. Yeah. I'd never sold a house in that neighborhood before, but I sold two. Now I've sold six in that neighborhood, That's and I really exactly. do have it. But it was just because I cir circle prospected that so That's hard. Right. Totally. That's right. Totally. Yeah. Andrew, what's um, what you doing? Biggest thing you're doing for listings? First of all, I love this concept because we own a few neighborhoods. If you're going to sell mass volume, you better own, you better lock this That's stuff right. down. And you want That's the right. good ones. So we're selling hundreds of houses in the same neighborhood. So what we're doing is trying to make it just so automatic. So every time we take a listing, we're creating social media ads across the board, targeting sellers. That's key. Automatically. So it's got to be a system. Like, I don't have to think about it. That house went up, I know. Boom. All these ads are going out. Two is we're, we, we tapped into through Rod and Home Sale. They got us this relationship with Express Docs. I think that might be a dude, 80 cents for jumbo postcards with our QR code or ads on it. And those go out. And I just pick the number. We, we do 100 at least every time. But if it's a nice listing, I'll say, just do 1,000. Here's 800 bucks. And the QR codes on them, and I've went on so many listings recently where I've seen it. I've seen that post sitting there. I'm anti postcard. I'm like, oh, digital oh, postcard works. People read the yeah. words now. The yeah. postcard's great. So those are, those are the two things: content every time, do the postcards, and then for home valuations. Don't talk about home valuations. Most of our websites have a home valuation thing. Seller Weed Suite and Boomtown. We get like hundreds of those every month, mm -hmm. and we just do the sticky note mailer, wedding envelope. Yeah. It's a wedding cake stamp. We say, hey, we saw you calculated loan. Let us know. We sell more than anybody else in this area. We'd love to maximize your equity. I like that wedding cake. At, at the yeah. end of this, where you guys, I want you guys to go, but remind me, if I ever, I think I might present you guys the nosy neighbor thing that I have a federal trademark on. Oh, what? Mm -hmm. I don't have that. Don't okay, have I'm going to get the postcard sent to you. A listing is a tool to get more business, right? Okay. Right. Do open houses. So I would always want you to do a nosy neighbor. If it's going to go live on Thursday, Wednesday night, I want you to know as your neighbor. I'm gonna give you some cards that we have here that you send around a radius to this whole point of we know three houses are gonna sell within a certain radius. <laughs> send out cards or door hangers to a two block radius around that house. Got it listed. Wednesday night, we're gonna have a nosy neighbor. All the neighbors are gonna come in there. People make fun of the nosy neighbor. So you have, you have them sign in. We're gonna give away a bottle of wine or a six pack of your favorite beer, right? Whatever you want. Everybody, right, that says, and you, you're gonna walk them around, show them the house, you know, the, the primary, Goal here, get the contact information, you know, then ask them in some way you're comfortable, you know, are you thinking about moving in the next two to three years? You know, the market's right. changed, blah, blah. And anyone that says that they, they think about moving in the next two to three years, you're going to call them back. They want they want a bottle of wine. They want their six pack of beer, something like that. Yeah. I like and, the idea of are you moving in two to three years? Because yes. that's way less pressure. Yes. There are some people that are like, are you moving anytime soon? Yeah. And they're like, uh, no. Yeah. But I who, like who here is doing investor flip properties? There's no better one. When you've took a house in a neighborhood and you've went and updated it, you've got a big container in the driveway dumping shit in it for a month, right? Everyone's paying attention. You've took a house that's yeah. bringing down values in the neighborhood. You've now just updated it. Now you've got a house that's going to bring up. 
do a nosy neighbor there, everyone's gonna show up. Anybody else in that same situation is maybe gonna call you. We've had people that all of a sudden are getting other houses. I want that, I'll do that. I'll commit to doing that too. The thing is that some of the owners will fight you on that. I don't want all the neighbors in my house. Some, some will, some will. Some, some, well. some people like nosy, they, you know, some people are offended by it. What we know is, I guarantee this works. I mean, I've seen yeah. it, I've done it from and, California. And the neighbors to wanna to pick their neighbors. Yes. So they'll help maybe. So I'm gonna give you some marketing pieces on that. And then other people will send out a flyer saying, you know, those neighbors, and they'll have cookies or wine or beer. You have choices of what they want, right? Because not everyone wants wine, not everyone wants beer, whatever. So I'll get you, I'm going to get some stuff and I'll get that in our Dropbox and out to you guys. But I'm telling you, it's a vehicle to start owning a neighborhood. I've had agents that did no houses in the neighborhood, got one lesson there, did nosy neighbors. Next thing you know, now all of a sudden, they're the neighborhood specialist. So can we use a trademark, more importantly? Or? Yeah. Okay. Here, here's the other thing is, um, you know, along with that, when we did that, basically, knows our neighborhood program, was we, we when we went and door knocked around the neighborhood or sent it out, we would have the open house, let's say, on Saturday is going to be from 10 to 11, or 10 to noon. We would say, but we know that we're expecting a large crowd. As someone in the neighborhood, we're going to have it open from 9 to 10, for just, just for you guys in the neighborhood. Now, it does two things. First off, it gives them a little exclusivity. Plus, everybody that comes in between 9 and 10, those are owners. That's a different conversation I'm having with those folks as they come in. That's a different follow-up program. So you're able to identify some things that way in a way that really helps you do that. Also, when you're door knocking, one of the things that we always taught, I don't know where I learned this, this is years ago, is telling them about the open house. We're not even asking them while we're there if it doesn't come up about what do you think my house is worth or whatever. As we're leaving, we did, we called it the old, y'all are too young to remember Columbo, um, but Columbo yeah. used to do this no, thing. We call it the old Columbo. Columbo. I remember all Yeah, it was like, he would always do this where he would be walking away, then he would turn around with one last little question. And it was the same thing we did as, it's, you, as you're walking away, you turn around and say, by the way, Listen, I'd be the worst realtor in the world if I didn't at least ask. Do you guys, is there a price where you guys would consider selling? And just be quiet and listen to what that, that conversation is. No, we love the neighbor. I don't blame you a bit. Hopefully we can see y'all the open house. You know, but it gives that door opening in a way that's comfortable to them. So some of those things. These are, are all there. about processes again, though. That's right. Because after the nose neighbor, you call back and say, you know what, you want a bottle of wine. Can I drop that by? And say, you know what, the market's changed so much over the last couple of years. We've seen a house in your this neighborhood over the last three to four years go up $100,000. If you'd like me to, I'd be happy to walk through your house and do a market analysis for you mm -hmm. and get that back to you, right? So I'm at the open, yeah, or the, the nosy neighbor. Deliver the bottle of wine or beer. Walk through the house. Deliver back to them a CMA, right? You got you to start seeing them two, three, four, five times. Now all of a sudden you're building a relationship with someone you didn't build a relationship with in the past. Can you imagine? I'm just thinking for myself. If I can get 20 of my agents on our team, and I'll do it too. I'll, I'll never ask someone to do something I'm not willing to do. And they're all doing that every single time. Oh Can you even imagine? Gosh, that's right. Systems make exactly. the ordinary extraordinary. It's fun. You do it once. You make a bunch of money, and you go play golf again. That's not how it works. Yeah. You say, "This is what we do here." Right. This is how we do. It. And if you were to do that, my God. So it's taking what you were talking about, and I'd love and for you to speak time. to this. I've stole people's time. I apologize. So we got to no, make sure that I just want you. I want you. I'd love for you to dive in. You mentioned we own a neighborhood. What is the follow up in the neighborhood? You just gave us a little bit of a process. Once you take a listen, what's the what's the what's the monthly mail or the monthly call? The contact. The the. Everything? We don't do much. That's what I'm saying. Like we just we do, we make a ton of content. We sell the most in the neighborhood. We're trying to make it automatic with these postcards, but and we do a lot of open houses and people know who we are. But we're not even close to being anything that I'd even want to share because it's not as good as what you guys are talking about. In terms are, you, of follow -up. are you guys allowed to do directional signs? Mm -hmm. They're against our city code, but we, we do them anyway. And so I just tell them, they're $7, they may get picked up. Okay. So do those because if you have seven directional signs in a neighborhood, it looks, those are all billboards. It looks yeah, like you own the neighborhood for $7 a thing. Who cares if they take them all? Yeah. Buy those brick right. trophy, those really pretty, what they call them, the fishtail ones. Those are the best yeah, ones. Are. Gee, what are y'all doing? Uh, does anybody use RPR in here? No, but yeah. I saw I this. Show. I do. Okay, Confusing. so something I've had a little bit of success with in the higher price points, uh, the 500 above, um, they they help you make these really cool reports. Uh, some of them can be very lengthy, like 30 pages or whatnot, but I do like a mini <clears throat> activity report right. of the neighborhood. And I take one copy uh, intentionally and I go put it there at, at my open house. I'm a big proponent of open houses. So when I do that, you know, people will come, they'll sign in. Um, and they look through it and like, can I have this? Oh, it's my last copy. And but I'll be happy to mail you one, email you one. And that's how you get their information. Yes. Yeah. And then every time somebody has asked for it, I have emailed it to them. Obviously, follow up with it. And I've, I've had great success with that. It hasn't worked so much in the lower price point and the higher price point. I don't know why the rich people not have time to research or whatnot. 
but a lot, cool. of, a lot of success with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you take, and it could be anything, not just that, but it's called a mini activity report, neighborhood report, and everything is done for you. It's so, and it's branded to you too. It talks, it, it tells you how many homes are in the neighborhood. You know, the comps are there. Uh, it has statistics. It has graphs. And RPR is free. And it's free. Right. Yeah. It's, it's it's free to all of us. So. I'm being a neighborhood expert, just start reciting that on video. So you guys know again, there's 1,800 homes. One thing I would say, this is a really good point on the follow-up after this, and, and Sierra, will come to you in just a second, but if you can repeat what we talked about a little bit earlier on having the follow-up with the postcards. But one of the most critical parts is you have the open house, you've gathered this information, how are you following up with them? One of the things that we always preach is, is because, listen, odds are that person has gone to multiple open houses that day. So if you send them a text, an email, they're not sure who it is. Take your phone out. Send them a quick selfie video. Hey, it was great for you stopping by all this. Just just send them a text where they connect with you on your face. Yeah, he's the bald guy. That's right. Oh, yeah, that's that's that 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 good-looking guy. Come on, man. That's right. Yeah, but I'm a swagger. You know, that guy. I was looking straight at his face. I say some baller stuff in an open house. We always lock them down. All right, give me one or two of them. Right quick. Real quick, in an open house, you're going through there, you always want to be super prepared with all the data. Maybe it's that mini activity report, Alec, that stat analysis thing is what we call them, bright MLS. I have all the comps, and I always ask a buyer and say, hey, has anyone went over all the current market dynamics in this price point in X neighborhood between this and this price? So if they're coming to this 400K listing, they're probably in that market. Has anyone, it's really important for you to know if you're looking for a good deal, which I'm just going to assume you are, you really understand the market velocity and dynamics currently today in this market with active pending and sold. If it's okay with you, I want to educate you just for a minute. Has anyone went over that with you? And you have it all right there. So hey, right now there's seven houses on the market. We're in this one right here. It's been on the market for four days. There's six other ones on the market. I'm out of here at two. I can show you any of these houses. It's important for you to understand everything that's on the market. Here's what's under contract. I sold this, this, and this. I know what these sellers are willing to take. Look right here. Average house sells in 18 days for 97.8% of list price. So you can probably expect to get 2% off. And no one's went over that with you. And they go, no. So take this. And you should probably also understand the components of an offer so you can make sure you're protecting your equity when you're going into a real property purchase. Do you say that as soon as they come in? Yeah. Toward the house? No, yeah. I like guns blazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, with the little report first. You know, just a cost. You're cool. You know, just be normal. You can say, has anyone whatever this stuff? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you can go look at the house. The house is awesome. Because he asked for the permission. He said, if it's okay with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's just like, because, you know, people, if you give them the opportunity, every single person who's ever walked into Best Buy looking for this exact USB cord, someone says, hey, do you know what you're looking for? I'm all set. No, nope. don't talk to me. Right. So you just give them to what they want. And, and then after then, they like, it's kind of like that listening point. I want them to gravitate to me. And then I cut them loose. There's no clothes. There's no nothing. Say, hey, that's important for you to take my information down here. See that? And they just stare at it. And they're like, you kind of like pattern interrupt. Mm -hmm. See, you did sell those last year? See, Hey, what, why don't, hey, let's meet at, let's meet at two. There's going to be other people walking in here. I want to give you the time of day. There's yeah. other stuff you need to know. But. Yeah. Yeah. That goes back to that point of, you know, that I always preach is, is that um, top agents attract business. Um, average agents chase business. Sure. He's not chasing anything. He's giving value. Yeah. He, and, and by giving that value, it's, it's almost like it's the, you know, he literally is making them want to work with him even more than if he were to just blast out and everything and say, do It's all in your head. you got to be mentally prepared. Right. I tell you, you don't do an open house if you're going to sit in here, show up late, not look the part, not be mentally prepared and be a freaking happy person and greet people like it's a long lost friend. If you're not willing to do it, stay home. Right. We don't even want our brand on that day. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. That's um, no, we're yeah, they, please, Sierra, talk. Um, I also was given advice one time to block out two hours after the open house for potential sellers that you talk to that are buyers and sellers oh. after. Also, like, um, look at the other houses that are for sale around the, the subdivision. So if that buyer comes in, they don't like that house. That's right. They don't have a buyer. Block. You have that two hours blocked out. Hey, do you at 3.30, do you want to go see this house next door? I'll schedule it right now while we're sitting here. They come back and meet you at 3.30 to see the house next door. It's great. Yeah. Really good. Being okay. prepared. Again, being prepared. Yeah, Kyle. So, yeah, I, I really like what Sierra does. That's uh, that's kind of what I do. I mean, I don't hold a lot of opens now just as a time thing, but uh, you know, I plan on it now that I have some help. Uh, but uh, so having switch sheets is kind of what we call them in my market. Just having, it's like, you know, the, even if this house isn't for you, great. You know, I'm not here to sell you this house. You know, I'm holding it open, but I'd love to work with you, you know, on something else. If this home is similar to what you're looking for, here's a couple of listings that are local and live. And you kind of have to do it that morning because the market's so crazy that you, you know, just pop in the office before the open and do it. But, um, and then something else that I think is kind of important to touch on is like, you know, these are all best practices, right? But 
not everybody's going to have time to do the best practice. So I think like kind of noting what the second best practice might be is also important, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. Because, uh, you know, in a perfect world, you'd have the time to do all this stuff, right? But, you know, a lot of agents are busy and they just, you know, a lot of this stuff I have to do is because I haven't had the time to do it. But um, so one thing I you try to utilize is um, systems like Slide Dial, for yes. example. Yes. Um, so, you know, if you don't have the time to call that follow up because you have, you know, a crap ton of shellings to go to right after, at least slide dial them, you know, just yeah. drop it in their, their voicemail box. And, and it's get literally 10 cents a drop. And yeah. Oh, so what does a call like that sound like? One. Yeah. There's free one. Yeah, there is. There's a free one? Then? Yeah, it's, it's just. Yeah, really you can do up to a certain amount free, I think. And yeah. It's like, you know, it, it's a no brainer. But it's, it's cheap even. Yeah. Yeah. So what does that sound like if you're, um, if just, you're just having a, you know, it's, it's great meeting you. You know, I'd love to, I'd love to, uh, you know, just kind of just giving them a little bit of a marketing pitch, you know, right. just how you can put them in good position to, to be successful in, in their house search. Um, and uh, and it's easy, you know, and I use slide out for everything because uh, honestly, I just, some stuff I just don't have the time to do, you know, right. so, but you still want to do something. So, you know, if you don't have time for the best practice, do the second best practice. Right. Yeah, right. I, I use slide out for, if I put a house under contract and it closes, as soon as it closes, I do a slide out to that neighbor that says, Hey, just want to reach out, let you know you'd never believe we got what we got for oh, this yeah. home. Went under contract this many if days. You can partner, if you want, if you're interested in, give me a call. If you have Red X and Slide Dial, game changer. You know, you just circle the damn neighborhood, get all the all the you know yeah, phone numbers, and just drop right. drop that Slide Dial yeah. in, and, and you, you know, that, yeah. do you do that Red X and Slide Dial? Yeah, yeah, we do it. Do you guys get a lot of listings from that? Red X and Slide Dial. And again, that's we, don't the the best call we don't use the Red X. We don't use the Red X. Red X just grabs it's everything for. So yeah, know, but, but but no, it's it's a. But here's the thing: is if this is a neighborhood that you're really focused on, um, and you're dominating this, it takes you one time to gather those numbers. Yeah. Now they're going to modify and change it, you know, every so often. But once you've got that list, literally, you, you've got that list. You're dropping a Slide Dial for, hey, we just listed this place. We want to make sure the neighbors have an opportunity to choose their neighbors. We're gonna have an open house. Here's that information. Yeah. Here's hey, our community party. Called you a few days ago to let you know that we we're gonna that we got this listing. It actually went under contract in two days. We had multiple offers. We got some people that might be willing to pay a premium if they found the right house. Have you heard of any of your neighbors that might consider selling? Love to hear from you. Do, do, do. The one thing I do. Then like it's like, by out. the way, we just closed it. Your price has gone up because this has changed the pricing in your neighborhood. If you know of any of the neighbors, we still got people that would love to be in the neighborhood. I like so this is a system it's plan. It's not overbearing. You know, it's like it, it puts in their voicemail. You know, they, they, it's not like your phone's ringing. It's not like you're bothering them on a Sunday. It's just like, yeah. oh, you got a new voicemail. Let me, let me right. check her. Yeah. You can't take that for granted. Just because you own it now, let me own it forever. You better lock that. Yeah. Listen, once you once you have the upfront done by the admin to set up that group of phone numbers and you've dropped it into Slide Out, you record the first message, that's saved. That is a saved group. So now you just literally record another one and just say, I want to send this to that group again. So you're multiplying those things. Right. And, you could also and then when you get the listing from that group that you just did, you just literally take that same list and then drop it into that, the next one into that. So it moves. Heidi, let's go to you. All right, real quick. So most of the stuff that I've done this year has been off market. Raleigh is a very, um, we've got a ton of people moving in and I'm sure everybody feels that way. Anyway, so it's very sexy to have something that's off market. So I've got one market, one neighborhood that I'm trying to dominate right now. There's two mega realtors that are in there. So me kind of going in is kind of funny up against these guys, but these are all, it's the neighborhood that my country club is in. And I've got these 30 girls that, I mean, we went out on my birthday, we had a party bus. Anyway, they have just like championed me to be like the realtor of this neighborhood. And so as they're going on walks with their kids or whatever, they are for me saying like, do you know somebody, that, you know, oh, was, you know, so-and-so passed awesome. away, you know, we need to sell our house. Oh, well, get Heidi, right? So like they're doing that for me, which has been incredible. Um, and now I've sold more houses in that neighborhood than any other realtor this year. And that, I mean, I just turned that on. I'm like, like your luxury now, so, baby. Mm -hmm. I'm trying. <laughs> so that's been really good there. Um, but really it's just the women supporting me. And like, they're like, what is your goal? And I'm like, I want to dominate this neighborhood. Yeah. And it's not like, well, I'd really like to. No, I want to dominate this neighborhood, right? right. And they've really uh, helped me out a lot. And I've partnered with other people in the neighborhood to make sure that when we're selling, we're using their services. So like so-and-so's husband's a plumber, right? Like so-and-so's an interior designer, whatever. So it's really been great for the neighborhood. The other thing that I'm doing is every time I talk to somebody, they're like, oh, you know, how are you doing? Good, good, good. How's real estate? Oh, it's good. Can't get enough listings. I wish I had more listings. I have so many buyers just coming out of my, you know, out of the wazoo. I'd love to have more listings. So if you ever know somebody, even if they don't want to hit the market, like, let me know. I could probably, like, pair something up behind the scenes. And, really and then I, yeah, I have a closing, maybe it's today, um, where the exact same thing happened. So I'm double ending it because my buyer was looking for a house that their seller wanted to do. So oh, bad. That's good. That's bad. good. Working on this out. That's really good. Um, Circle Prospect, do you want to add anything additional that you're doing right now? That's your main focus? It's my main thing. It's just my sphere. Asking for business. Like, I've gotten where I'm not 
I'm mm-hmm. not that I ever was really scared to. I mean, we talked about this once. Like, I asked yeah. for business, but that's the main thing. Just yeah. telling people what we need. Yeah, yeah that's good. Sierra? I would say I'm not doing anything that other people have already said. Um, I would say or add to it that if you do postcards, like, under contract or just sold, make them detailed, especially right now. Yeah, I agree. Um, how many offers you had, how much over, the inspection really repairs, you know, because they need to know how many All buyers are actually still out there looking in their actual neighborhood. Tell yeah. the full story, in other words, yeah. And yes. you're utilizing QR codes on those? Right? I'm not, actually. I have QR codes my, are such a no brainer. I have that on my Right, they are anymore. Imagine the yeah. postcard that just says, you want to hear the story of how we sold this house? Yeah. Just just click this. Yes. And then you give them the details. But then yeah. they, it's so Can easy. Video? Selfie video. Oh, this is stupid. Yeah. 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 Anyone yeah. you're not using QR codes is stupid. The pandemic's helped people the, understand. Yeah. Well, yeah. They yeah. Have, yeah. You yeah. have. We tried to use them. I went to MIT 11 years ago. We came back to try to use them because I thought it was a cool yeah. idea. And I could not get engagement back. But you had to get an app. It was different. It's easy now. right? When it's easy, everyone will use it. It's so funny how it stopped and then came back. It came back. They're the operate the major operating systems in corporate. Yeah. Right, it's all it's on your phone now, so it's yeah. easy to do. Yeah, your phone. Yeah, I've had it for like ten years. Camera, but I can see every camera. Yeah. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. It's not a droid. What's that? <laughs> uh, yeah, we've had it for like ten years. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. glad you guys are catching up. Yeah, <laughs> Kyle, what are you do, what are y'all doing specifically? One best practice that you're doing for generating this. Um, I mean, really, besides uh, a lot of it has already been said. Um, I think really the only thing different, um, just to kind of buddy on what Duncan said about the um, home valuation tools. Um, that, that's a pretty uh, successful uh, Facebook ad campaign. Um, so I'll, I'll target, uh, Facebook's really pulled back on what you're allowed to target now, which has made it a little more difficult. Um, but uh, you know, just try to try to get in front of people that are actually homeowners, and, and that's not always an easy thing to do. Um, and then just trying to push them to a home valuation landing page yeah. um, through uh, that's built in my CRM as well. So it's really good, really good. All right, um, we're gonna wrap this up. I just Duncan, I want to visit back to this because I think everybody chases the shiny penny. This is a por- portion maybe for someone that is trying to figure out how to generate listings and wants to do it quickly. Um, I love the fact that you're going out and finding mm-hmm. vacant land. It's so so overlooked, and it leads to additional listings. Talk about that process of are you having the buyer first or are you finding the property then finding the buyer so when i started off with it i had i had a seller i had a buyer he wanted to do a custom house found him the found him the builder he already had the land we just had to sign off on the contract and everything he had a realtor already he came to me afterwards and said hey i do not like the way that my realtor handled this transaction i like the way that you handled it let's talk future business well thanks y'all everybody was just so transparent everything i know if somebody's watching this they got some value out of this listen um the contact information for everybody that was a part of this is going to be in the description below um, or if you're listening to the podcast it'll be in the pod in the podcast notes um, i would highly recommend Put these folks in your database. If you're looking for somebody that's going to help you get some referrals closed, this is a group. And make sure you reach out to them and let them know if an idea that you heard today from one of them is working for you, make sure you reach out and let them know. That's the juice that keeps all of us being transparent and going. And uh, I hope everybody got some value out of this, and we'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks for watching the video. I specifically chose the video below for you because it builds on the one you just watched. I hope it's helpful, and I'll talk to you soon.